On this week's iPhoneography podcast, we have a follow-up on the iMovie review, and we go over our recent photos coming up now. Hey, everybody. This is the iPhoneography podcast. Welcome to the show. This is Monday, May 9th, and I am joined by my esteemed co-host, Dave Podner. Hello, Dave. Hey, Greg. How's it going for you tonight? Yeah, well, you know, it's not going bad. It's uh, It's been a rough couple of weeks, um, just getting over an illness and haven't been able to see my grandson because of it, and I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's uh, it's all part of life, and, uh, you know, yeah. we'll get through it. The worst is over, and it's just now my yeah. uh, my voice doesn't seem to be right, but... Um, uh, and I got a bit of a cough, so I'll try to be on that cough button as best I can tonight. But uh, well, as long as the important thing is you're getting better, yeah, and yeah. you'll be able to see the grandbaby soon. Oh yeah, yeah. Hopefully <laughs> later this week. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> so tonight um, <clears throat> we're gonna just kind of give an, a, a part two, I guess you could say, from our last show. Uh, where we talked about iMovie and uh, now I haven't really had much of a chance to play around with it, but you have, and Mm -hmm. you've uh, found out some stuff here. So I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you go at it. Well, yeah, because I I wanted to actually, because the last time we talked about it two weeks ago, we talked about, you know, I, I, we only played with it for a little bit because it literally just came out that earlier week and I didn't really have a chance or a, anything happening to actually use it, especially the magic movie feature where I was really excited about it because it was like, well, I like the memories feature in the photos. I would like a little bit more power now and then, and a little bit more customized, you know, you can customize a little bit more. That would be great. The problem, there's a, now I will say this, it's still not a bad feature. I hope they improve on it. Here's where it kind of falls down. We hope. Yes. Yeah. Um, Here's where it falls down, though. If you have a lot of vertical shots, um, especially like I had a birthday party this past weekend for my great nephew. He just turned three. Lots of adorable shots. Most of them are vertical, though. Magic Movie does not handle vertical shots well. So it does not automatically do the Ken Burns panning on a shot. Oh, really? It just kind of crops it because it's really set up to do a horizontal video. So it doesn't try to use, and it should, any artificial intelligence or anything else to say, oh, well, this shot's vertical, so we want to zoom in here and maybe see more of the shot than a horizontal shot, or maybe we don't want to do a horizontal shot for this one, or we don't want to do letterbox. We want to do a different, you know, a square, more of a square format. So you would think that it would be like picking out someone's face and highlighting that, but it doesn't do that. Well, it, it, it does a decent job with that. The problem is that if you want to show more of a scene with a vertical shot, like there was a couple of shots where uh, the nephew or grand nephew's name's Ramses, mm-hmm. and um, he's like opening presents. So you have, you know, he's he's a little kid; he's only three years old, grabbing a present, and of course, like he's standing up or he's sitting up. So it's a vertical. I'm taking a vertical shot, the, you know, instead of a horizontal. Well, it may crop in on his face, but I would want his face and maybe the present he's holding. Oh yeah, okay. You know, and it it works good as a vertical shot or even a pan. You know, if you want to do a horizontal, a pan would work great. However, it doesn't seem to automatically be smart enough to do that. So if you have a go in, can you go in on each individual picture and not with the the beginning and an end of the not with the magic? eh? No, no, no. It's really dumb. I hate to say dumbed down, but it's really overly simplified. Right. It is literally pick the photos and videos, hit the button and see what you get out. Uh, So and same thing with uh, because uh, the weekend before I had my marathon weekend where I did the 5K Saturday half marathon on Sunday. And um, 
I took some good shots beforehand, not 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 of the run itself, but a couple of steady shots um, that walking to the race and uh, afterwards that were some interesting shots. Uh, and I was able to because they do have packages that you can purchase of shots, uh, professionally done shots during the race. Admittedly, they're very low quality. What you get is a preview, but I understand they're wanting to make money. And they got, unfortunately, but again, I understand they want to make money. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Watermarks all over the oh, yeah. edge. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they're not they're, they're good enough if you want to say, hey, look at my face in complete agony here. Isn't that, see how much fun <laughs> I was having? Yeah. Uh, but if you want to do a, like a, 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 like I did a, a a slideshow set to music. Um, most of those shots are vertical, you know. So doing mm-hmm. them in the magic movie, you got maybe my face, but you didn't get the whole image, you didn't get the shot behind me, it just didn't work as well. Uh, so for that, I did still use iMovie on the iPhone, so I still did it on there. I did the old time, I don't want to say old timey, but I did the you know, the, the, the manual. manual work. The yeah, manual. Okay. Now it's easier now than it used to be because you can select multiple videos and pictures, import it all at once. It'll put in the transition mm-hmm. based on the um the theme you have. So that worked great. That worked absolutely wonderful. And then I was able to each shot go, okay, you know, I do the pan. I did a pan, the the Ken, what they call the Ken Burns effect on almost every photo. Yeah, uh, because I I like the slow pan look. You can you point the attention to a particular yeah, part and, because it almost like it's almost like it's bringing a it still photo to life, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So I did that in a little bit of video and put it to it and put some goofy music behind it and and I actually I tried a couple different things. I tried doing it in um in iMovie. I tried using the memories feature in the mm-hmm. photos app, uh, which unlike iMovie where I can say, well, this shot, I want slower. This shot, I want more time. This shot, I want where it's like, oh, we're giving you a set period of time. And that's all you get for each one. Yeah. And then I tried doing a uh, very similar thing in the uh, TikTok app where oh, okay. they have it set up where you can just select images and photos, put some music to it. And then create a movie to it. Hmm. Uh, the one advantage to TikTok is you have a, they have um, agreements with music publishers where unlike with the Apple, either photos or iMovie, and it seems like iMovie has a lot more music and it's good music, um, but it's nice theme music, but it's not brand name music. Right. You yeah. know, where in TikTok, if you want to use, let's say, and I know one that's really popular right now is Lizzo's new theme, a new song. Um, you can select that, you know, or if you wanted to use something else that was really popular with a commercial, you can use that and you can post it to TikTok without having a takedown because they have a license agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Where if you try to rip the song and import it, and you don't have license for it and you post it, it will be taken down, which, you know, that's their yeah. that's their right to do. I understand it's not fair. It's not fair use. It's, you know, or you yeah. try to rip a song from a YouTube video and post, you will be taken down again. That's their right as a publisher. But so it's, I tried the three different ways just to see which one turned out better and just to play with it, you know. So and, what was your finding on that? Like, uh uh, I like the iMovie maybe because I, I want to make sure because the iMovie, I took a lot more time because you can customize the manual, t- the manual, the manual, one? Yeah, the manual yeah. one. I like it in terms of it was, but it was also longer, you know, it turned out to around two minutes because it just didn't show an image. It actually had the slow pan on some images and, oh, yeah. you know, so I like it, but I also put a lot of time, a lot more time to make it, but it was also two minutes, which I know most people will not watch a video for two minutes, unfortunately, anymore. I know it sounds weird. People want that one minute at most. 
including Instagram, which will not allow you to upload more than a minute long video. Oh, okay. But you know, something uh, like that, it. like if you, your, your uh, grand nephew's birthday party. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Like so if you put something together like that, chances are you're not going to post it online, but you will say, send it to his parents and, and right. family members and they will watch the whole two minutes. Yeah, I yeah would think. exactly. So it's really what you want to do. And honestly, I would say try as much as you can. Yeah. Because I know face um, Instagram has a very similar thing to TikTok where you can create a, uh, the real same thing with mm-hmm. Facebook. Yeah. Um, or is it very similar? It depends on what you like and what, what particular you're used to. Um, and a lot of the ones like the Facebook, the Instagram and the TikTok, you can publish privately to see what it looks like. And then you can send a link if you want to do like, like, um, the, uh, our niece and nephew live eh, a little over two mi- two hours away. Okay. Driving. So we see them once very, you know, we're not going to see them every weekend. It's a pretty mm-hmm. long drive for us. So, yeah. you know, the way, honestly, the way I shared it was to post to Facebook and to tag them on it. And that way they can, if they wanted to share it with their friends, you know, where they work at and say, oh yeah, here's my Facebook and here's what my uncle did in terms of some images from the, you know, the opening and what happened at the party. Yeah. You know, so, well, you know, that's, that's that way it's not public, public, but it's easily yeah. shareable. Well, it's it's interesting that you've you've discovered that about the, the magic move and and how it's um, you know a little less than favorable um, when it comes to like the crop and and things like that, especially with a vertical uh, photo. You would think that it would do a lot better, especially in this day and age when a lot of people take vertical photos. Like Instagram just come out with the other day. I don't know if it's uh, part of the app yet or not. Uh, maybe they're rolling it out slow. I'm not sure, but they've just um, uh, announced that they're going to play around with 16 by nine crop of vertical photos mm. as opposed to horizontal. Like, um, you know, and that kind of puts me in mind of, to what Dayflash used to use. Uh, you know, their, their app was all vertical mm-hmm. oriented. And if you wanted to see it horizontal, you could put a picture on there but you'd have to turn your phone to see it or whatever. But um, it, it's too bad they that, that Apple doesn't do a little better job with the AI, like you said earlier, uh, when it comes to these vertical images. So, yeah. um, you know, like I say, I've yet to play around with it too much. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure after my first meeting with my grandson, I'll be able to put something together. <laughs> Let's say you have tons of photos, tons yeah. of photos. Well, you, my daughter, log bless her, she's been taking some pictures and sending them to us. But um, <laughs> uh, it's just not the same as being there and getting your own and whatnot. So, right, um, you know, I, I want to get something that hopefully we can get enlarged and stuff like that too. So, uh, all right, well, well, thanks, Dave, for the update on on iMovie. Um, oh yeah, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a work in progress. I hope. I know they don't update it that much. Um, but, uh, Apple, if you're listening, which I doubt you are, <laughs> listen to Dave's, uh, gripe about it and do something, <laughs> fix it. Um, so, okay. So, you know, because of my voice and everything else, we're going to keep this episode a little short, uh, shorter than usual. So we won't have any tips or anything, but we will go through our recent photos real quickly here. And, um, uh, you know, as we do, well, I'll start with you, Dave. Now let's let me sure. get. Uh, get these up here. This is a cool photo of a section of a bridge. And I'm going to guess that that's a railway bridge. It is. Yeah, that's a railroad bridge. Uh, It's a freight railroad bridge. Um, And I kind of like the reason that this caught my eye. I did take a further shot away that had the entire bridge. But I also wanted to capture the other bridges going upriver. Um, because it, it, if you notice in the distance, this is actually this was um, Friday, uh, a couple Fridays ago, that there's a um, the railroad bridge right behind that. There is a kind of a green uh, a, gr- a bridge with the green bottom behind it. Yeah. 
Um, and then there's a yellow arch bridge. And oh, a little wow. further up river, there's a, another railroad bridge. And there's a blue bridge right above that. Wow. So, and that's I, 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 I never miles. noticed all these bridges in this one shot. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're almost the way they kind of nest underneath each other. Yeah. Because yeah. of the way the, 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 the angle goes. And, yeah. Because once, once you see the one, like the green one in behind the first mm-hmm. one, and then you start looking, oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. There, and it just draws you right in. Yeah. And, and it's, 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 it, the, the river really doesn't taper that much in reality. It, it has that leading line, though, that mm-hmm. the bridges kind of lean to, that you see the different bridges going kind of upriver here. And I, I just kind of like the look there. And um, if you look kind of in the middle of the image, there's two um, smokestacks, really old mm-hmm. smokestacks with a red brick building. Yeah, uh, that is the old Heinz plant. Oh, really? Yeah. Now that's converted a lot of that into um, apartments and lofts now. So it's not actually not a factory anymore. It was up until like around 10, 15 years ago. So uh, because well, I went to school literally right across the street from there. And oh, okay. Uh, I remember we went on a tour and actually, and this sounds gross. It was a ketchup. What part of the tour was ketchup tasting <laughs> uh, because they, they did not make the large bottles of ketchup, but may made kind of the small one. And it was the corporate headquarters at the time before oh, okay. it was bought out and sold out and made private and moved and everything else that tends to happen with corporate mergers these days. Uh, but yeah, that's the original Heinz factory where the pickles and the baby food and everything else was made. Hmm, interesting. And it's like I said, it, ne- it is neat that the, they're still, they reuse the building instead of just tearing it down, putting some nondescript building up. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it gives, you know, it keeps the, uh, um, you know, the old style look of the city alive mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of city. This glass yeah. building is amazing. Yeah, yeah. This is this is cool. Um, this was actually a little before the half marathon. Uh, this is in in from Market Square. So this is actually it's this year. I mean, we're talking decades and decades ago. There used to be a market building where the road went underneath it here, uh, but for whatever reason, you know. They decide the building wasn't necessary or or, so they, so it's an open square area now. Um, And the building you're looking at is actually the headquarter of PPG. uh, Pittsburgh, formerly known as Pittsburgh plate glass. Yes. So, so that was, um, it was built in 83 and basically it was built as a glass castle to show off their glass that they made. So and that's their that's their tower. And it's nice, kind of nice because you have the the square in front of you where there's different restaurants and areas and around Christmas there's a little um um uh, market, Christmas market they have set up there. Mm-hmm. Um and so it's it's a really popular open area. And it's just with having that, you know, gothic glass structure just behind it is kind of a neat setup there i don't know if i ever told you but we had a glass plant a ppg glass plant right here in town years ago uh it's been closed down for probably 25 or 30 years now but uh but yeah it used to be one of the big employers of the city yeah it's one, one of the things that's crazy is that ppg actually sold off the glass component of the company so ppg no longer makes glass but they make paint yeah which is just kind of you know it's 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 like a car company it's just it's kind of crazy it's like oh so what you 
what your company literally is named after, you're not involved in anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. And this next one, it's a very nice looking blossom. I don't know what kind it is. Uh, um, this is a lilac, lilac bush, bush in our backyard. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's a real up close shot. Yeah, yeah. So this is um, from below. Um, and I did some adjustments to make the sky a little more uh, expressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead Dramatic. of just kind of a, exactly. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is basically a macro shot. So this was just me going up to the bush and looking from beneath it. And it's still blooming. Um, mm-hmm. So it's still ni- it still looks nice. Um, so this is just a really up. I, I just noticed, you know, before it was just out there. I was like, OK, I'll, and I just kind of noticed from afar, you can see it blooming and you can see the, the, the hint of purple there. And I walked up to it. And it almost all the flowers were better underneath versus on top. So I was Mm. able to get a nice shot of the flower with the, with the leaves behind it acting as a way to, without it getting washed out with the, with the back, with the uh, sky background. Yeah. Yeah. This time of year is always a a great time for flowers Mm -hmm. and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, Especially uh, after I don't know. About everyone else, but our spring has been questionable <laughs> this year. So yeah, we have not I, had I can a relate. chance to really. I can enjoy. relate. Now, I do want to say something, and luckily, Ruth's not paying attention because I'm going to mention something about running uh, <laughs> during during the half marathon. Because I always run with my phone. Um, a, I, you know, just in case something happens. You know, you, oh, yeah. you, can, you can fall or whatever. Uh, I listen to podcast when I'm running uh, and also for tracking purposes. You know, so I can you know, I, I know the watch tracks GPS, but it hooks up to the phone, too. So, yeah, you know, just a way to keep everything kind of coordinated there. But so I had my phone in my armband and I was it, it, they were calling for rain during the race. At first, it was well, it's not going to start raining till 1030. And I'm like, okay, well, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to probably hit the start line around 720 to 730. It's going to take me around three hours. I should be good if it's only light rain. They were wrong. They were very wrong. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yes. Um, starting around a mile maybe or so into the race and lasting until maybe mile four and the way I'm going, that's around. Mm, I'm gonna, I don't want to overstate. maybe around a half an hour, half hour, well, let's say 35 to 40 minutes. Um, basically go into your, sh- if you have a shower, go into your shower, turn on your shower, like you normally get a shower. And that's how heavy it was raining. Oh, wow. So it was a torrential downpour. Um, it was literally just a, for half an hour, just going in that heavy, heavy rain. Um, I did see one bolt of lightning and two flashes of lightning and heard thunder. Uh, actually, a friend of mine decided to drop from the race for safety reasons because oh, of yeah. the lightning and thunder. Yeah. Um, I... I, I assumed that the race people would, if it was un- dangerous, they would have stopped it. And since they didn't stop it, it wasn't dangerous. So I kept running. Maybe not the best decision, but I had no issue with the phone with waterproof. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And like I said, I did have, I had an armband on and I had just a short sleeve shirt kind of over it. But it literally think about like walking to a shower, a shirt and a little you know, the band's not going to help that much mm-hmm. in terms of raining that hard. And my case is more of a, um, now admittedly the phone, I always have the phone. So it, the, um, the ports point down. Yeah. So, you know, it, the rain would have to kind of get underneath, which it, if it's that wet, it can soak through, but I've had, I had no issue at all, which, you know, it, it, it's nice because it's, you know, it says it's waterproof. You know, it's the 
the water resistance and you can do it. And, you know, they say, don't go, don't swim with it. But if you get it, what it's not the end of the world. Well, it's nice to know that I went into a soaking rain and I had, we'll, we'll, we'll watch tonight, but I had no issues with it. So that's always hmm. a positive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, you know, they do say they're waterproof uh, to, uh, I forget how many meters, but um, yeah. for feet or whatever. And for like a, oh, I don't know. Basically, you can, t- you, you, I've seen videos where people have taken them underwater for and, and shot video of people <laughs> swimming and stuff like that. But, you know, these, I don't think they recommend it, but uh, I, I mean, I would want to put it in a waterproof case to do that. But, um, but as far as just being in the rain, I mean, I had mine out in the rain before too, and never really got worried about it. You know, it's, uh, yeah, they've done a really good, good job with sealing them up. And, and, um, I mean, uh, I haven't dropped mine in a river or anything yet and I hope I never do, but I mean, if I do, then I know it's probably going to be okay, but I'm better chances of it being okay are better than not. So, yeah, so that's interesting. Um, so for mine, I had to basically pick Ooh. some uh, pictures from the past because I haven't been out since our last show and right. done any shooting yet. But, uh, and, and you know what, folks, forgive me if I've shown any of these before. Two of them is questionable to me. <laughs> One of them I know I haven't. But anyway, um, this this was just a trip to the local beach. Um, you know, if, if you're not able to look at your phone and look at the picture on the screen. Basically, it's just waves coming in. Uh, it was really, really windy, really windy and really cold. So, I mean, this was uh, well, probably a month ago or so. And, uh, you know, I just uh, wanted to capture the waves and would have liked to have done uh, a little bit of a long exposure just to show the more motion in the water. But, um it was too windy and too cold and I wasn't going to stand out there any longer than I did. But, uh, you know, and then basically you just got the sandy beach and the foreground has some, some, uh, beach grass or whatever on a little mound of sand. So it's a very simple photo, but, um, uh, just something that I just picked out while Dave and I were talking before the show, just so I could have something to show here. And, uh, that's about it for that. I would say I love the waves coming in, like in in just the, the series of waves coming in at you. Yeah, it was almost like they were just relentless, one after another after another. Ooh. Now, if it was like, you know, 90 degrees in the summertime, oh, it yeah. would be a lot of fun to be in that water <laughs> jumping over the waves and stuff. But <laughs> it was so cold. And this one here is just like a minimalist photo of a big rock on the shoreline. Um, this was at another mm. beach in another town. Um, probably about three weeks or so ago or so. And uh, all you can see in the photo is just water everywhere and a big rock. Now that rock is probably about, I want to say probably eight to 10 feet long. So it, it was a good size. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I just, thought it was interesting to, to keep it minimalistic. There was a few other rocks um, just outside the frame, but I just wanted to capture that minimalistic look. And uh, um, I don't really know if there's much editing done to this other than to maybe a um, bit of contrast and, and sharpness or whatever, but other than that, that was it. And my last one is at the local park. And this is a swan that is, uh, laying on some eggs. So it's, it's just oh, a simple, wow. uh, a simple photo. She was, um, laying with her head down for the longest time. And I, I stood there for probably about two minutes waiting for her to move. Mm-hmm. And finally she raised her head up and, um, I got a few different shots. Uh, one, one was looking right at me, but I was standing in a different spot where there was a, a like a, um, a recycling bin behind her uh, and it was just, just the angle it was at. So I didn't like that shot, but this one here is uh, interesting. And my next door neighbor had been going down there every day. I don't know how many times a day uh, taking pictures, trying to get, you know, the, the newborns, um, mm-hmm. the cygnets, is that what baby swans are called? 
Um, and uh, so far, no luck. I, I don't believe this. I don't believe they've hatched yet. So uh, sometimes you'll see the, the, both the mother and the father. I, I, I honestly don't know who looks after the nest most of the time, whether it's the male or the female. But uh, I mean, everybody just assumes that this is the mother. So um, it'll be interesting to see how many they have when they have have them. Mm-hmm. And and uh, maybe I'll get down and get some of the babies too. Oh. Yeah, so and, and this this part of the park, the local park here, there's all kinds of ducks and and other kinds of birds in here, and um, uh, you know, pretty popular attraction for for people to go down and see. So, yeah. well, how far away were you when you took that picture, Greg? Uh, I, so I used my telephoto on the on the uh, on my iPhone, and so that was probably about. 50 to 60 feet away maybe so it is oh, wow. it is cropped in a little bit oh, still um, that's sharp but i would have guessed you were much qu- you were much closer yeah it 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 was yeah it's just a, a little bit cropped in probably about maybe 25 percent uh cropped off the edges mm-hmm. and uh and then I, I i don't think i did anything else to it to be honest with you um but but yeah it'll be interesting to see when the young ones get there Oh yeah, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, well, I think we're going to call it a night there, Dave. And um, sounds good. So, folks, if you if you like, you know, hearing about our photos, let us know. Um, hit us up on social and all that stuff, and, and tell us what you think. Uh, if we're boring you to tears, let us know. <laughs> if you like what you see, let us know. <laughs> and uh, you know, um, because we don't want you know we don't want to do a show where we're going to turn you away or anything, but um, you know, we, we like talking about what we've been shooting lately and um, you know, it, it's very interesting to see Dave's world compared to my world. And, you know, we <laughs> live, I don't know how many hundreds of miles away, yeah. uh, but um, you know, two different countries weather wise, pretty much the same, but uh, you know, different cultures, different countries Um I'm in a small city. Dave's part of a lot bigger city, and and we just think it's interesting to um, you know to show these and and to talk about them. And, um, you know, by all means, let us know what you think. So, uh, mm-hmm. I just want to close off by saying that um, if you've looked at your podcast feed, you'll see that David Addison is back. He just released a show today where he interviewed the founder of the. Uh, editing app darkroom and uh so i'll put a link to the show in the show notes for that uh also for the youtube video um it's you know it's just a a video of the interview but um you know david comes on at the beginning and talks a little bit about you know why he's not been around and and whatnot so it's a good way to catch up with him there and um you know by all means go to the video on youtube and comment and and uh you know, tell him you miss him. Uh, it's it's nice to have him back on the network, and uh, look forward to seeing other other things from him again soon. Yep. So, uh, well, Dave, uh, thanks for coming on tonight, and uh, no, no let's problem, just Greg. tell everybody thanks, where thanks. they can find you. Thanks for um, toughing this one out. You can find me yeah. on uh, Twitter and Instagram as Prof Pod, and you can find me on. Um, uh, TikTok uh, occasionally do things not a lot of photography related, but uh, post some things there as Prof Pod PGH and on the Facebook group as Dave Podner. All right, you can find me on Instagram at Macmillan Photo and Twitter Macmillan underscore Photo and uh, all my online stuff at uh, about dot me slash Macmillan. The podcast lives on iPhoneography.ca and uh, from there you can either watch a video version if there is one or you you can click a link and listen online to the audio version and um, well I guess that's about it Uh, thanks Dave we will see you all in the next one have a great one everyone 